again and welcome to Manch Talk. I am Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And joining us today is the one, the only, Victoria Sullivan. I'm like, yay. I'm in welcome. The this is so cool. I know. We have, well, a, we have an interesting layout. setup here, but you and know, we'll make it work. from having to do this <laughs> yes. constantly. It's well, now only I have to. So. <laughs> but there's still no looking along. <laughs> but we'll mostly let you just talk to I your am. potential so voters. Are you? I am. Well, I spent the, today's, I know you don't go live. Well, we are live on, on Facebook, Facebook, so. Um, but for the television audience, yes. today is Tuesday, May the 4th yes. be with you. May the 4th and I be just with came from helping Sebastian Sharon off with his sign yep. holding, so I'm a little... Disheveled? Just a little bit You're disheveled. not really, though. But it's New I'm a New England it's, girl. You know what I mean? I don't get too thing. concerned You're the real about deal. stuff like that. Yes, yeah, that'll be interesting. So if you're watching on Facebook, today is um, special election day for all of you who live in Ward 6. Uh, if you live in Ward 6, get out there. It'll take you probably no time to vote because I can't imagine there's that many voters when out there. When I left, there were over 300 people had voted, so oh, that's, that's pretty not good. too bad. I mean, you know, the word on the street is special elections is where it's at, right? Yeah, because I mean, well, these yeah. give very uh, unique opportunities in order to go into one area and just kind of really focus, do doors, right. get all yeah. of that happening. But so we are hearing from the um, from the voters that they wish that the city did a better job at notifying them there was an election. Yeah, it's. I think people, I feel really disconnected from everything since COVID. Like, I yeah. don't feel like, and I'm usually a fairly involved person, and I realize that I've intentionally taken a step back. But I also feel like I don't even remember who the aldermen are or who the school board members are or if they're meeting. Like, somebody, Manchester Ink Link posted something about if you send comments, you can also send them to Ink Link, and they'd post them. And I'm like, are the aldermen meeting? And I'm like, how come I don't even so know this? Ink Link has turned our political scene into... I'm, Oh, sorry, but they've turned it into like a a, um, a popularity contest, which is really bothering me. Right. So I don't know if you noticed, but after the school board meetings, they'll say, they'll ask for your vote. And the most popular yeah, board cares? member was, I don't want someone who's popular. Right. I want someone who's making the right decisions for the right. city. This right. isn't it, high school. This and is even real like, life. Yeah, they, there was a there was a <laughs> poll <laughs> about the Fisher Cats, and it was like twenty questions. And I get that they're trying to engage with people. You know, I particularly like, even though I don't really follow much of it, I like uh, Andy's grocery shopping two things. He goes out every week and tries to find five products and t posts. Who has the best prices? That's the thing, I guess, you know. It justifies. <laughs> we can tell it Tammy is the bargain shopper helpful. in the group. Well, it reinforces <laughs> that I'm shopping at the right grocery store because Market Basket's always up at the top. Yeah. Well, I'm shopping from the back of a truck I at saw Warner's <laughs> Park and Ride because uh, I just got my half cow. So it's official. I could fit a half cow and a half pig in my freezer I at the same time. It freezer. was a squeeze. Is that you, do you have an extra freezer or just your regular freezer? I have freezer? a big oh, chest freezer. Half, oh, I yeah. can think of Remember I Love Lucy where like they got the freezer and they didn't want to tell Ricky and she ordered all this meat and she put all the meat in the freezer and then he, she was afraid he was going to find out so for some reason they threw it in the furnace and someone turned on the furnace and cooked all the meat. Oh no. no. Okay, it's that great does I love not Lucy need to happen. Episode, but yeah. That's why I can think of they're trying to shove all the meat in the freezer. Um, because you know, it's, it is it is more economical over the long term of course, but it's always like a big upfront amount. Right. So it's that kind of thing where, you know, I would recommend for folks back home is consider like actually saving up and doing it well, right and because then you always have food in the house yeah. mm -hmm. which means you can always take care of yourself right it's not so much prepper it's actually economical but mm. also you know if weird things happen like I you don't know, they it. decide to shut down <laughs> America you know you have some options yeah so how's the campaign going? It's going great. I so know. we launched a few weeks ago and it's been like like a rocket yeah. from the start. And we really have so much momentum, which is, you know, why I decided to run again. Right. Because I still had people coming to me saying, I hope you run, please run. You know, we need well, Dan, you. Dan, Dan so will much. tell everybody when we were knocking on doors for our state rep race, pretty much everyone when we were knocking wanted is that is that other woman running when is do I vote for Victoria in this? And I'm like, no, that's next year. So there was a lot of Interest. unsolicited interest yeah. in yeah. when they needed to vote for you again. Yeah. And when we announced, it was like right out of the gate. People were just, I mean, if you watch, so, you know, our social media, which we, we've talked about, it's a little, you know, hampered at the moment because Facebook tries not to, like conservatives have yeah. that big of a voice. But even at that, the interactions that we're getting on social media are huge. Yeah. And it's, you know, and I just want to say like, it's humbling to me. Yep. I The faith that people have in, in us, and it's not just me, it's, knowing that we will work together well, to Well, you know, and city. that is something that I, it's been, like, picking at me, where 
trying to look at because right now there's three candidates in the race there's victoria mm -hmm. there's rich gerard and there's joyce craig um and what differentiates like each of you from each other and one of the things that i really do think resonates well with you is that you don't go into it that look at me i have every answer and you just haven't figured it out yet you're you're more about we have problems and i think as a community we can solve our problems and I would like to help spearhead that to bring those the, the yeah. community together. So, uh, so I think. And when I'm talking to people out there, so you know, through through COVID, we had no city leadership. No, like the mayor was in a bunker. She didn't come out until this year, St. Patrick's Day. She put she painted a, a shamrock, and I think that was the first time anyone saw her yeah. emerge yeah. Um, since COVID since yeah. last March. And meanwhile. You know, I'm out there with people who are volunteering in the city and they're doing such good work. Like we did book drives to make sure kids had books in their yep. hands because they didn't have school and they didn't have the library. Yep. We had food drives that I helped out with, but it's not just me. It's I like the community came together. They had sports for kids as soon as they possibly could. Right. These coaches and, and the people that um, were in our leagues wanted to give the kids something as soon as they possibly could. Mm -hmm. My kids were at MPAL. We discovered MPAL through this because those volunteers wanted to make sure the kids had someone to look up to and to be out of the house and be with other kids. Yep. That's what drove the city through COVID. It was really these volunteers that we have. I mean, it definitely wasn't city leadership. It's, I literally lol laughed out loud when I was reading the paper on Sunday, you know, where it was this sort of position that, oh, Joyce Craig was out there leading the city no. through COVID. I was like, like how? She didn't even meet in person. And we, like, you know, we saw special education teachers in the schools helping kids. Our leadership yep. wasn't meeting in person. You couldn't address your elected officials in person. The clerk had to read your words on your behalf. That should never happen again. No. You should always be able to, uh, you know, and transparency well, is a I, big, big and, part of what we're missing and in I, I, from being personally, just because Carla and I have talked about this, you know, it, it's, it's disheartening, I think, for the average schmo, the average worker, the average guy living in, you know, the little ranch house in Ward 7 or whatever, who, you know, maybe was on unemployment for months. Um, sure, for a while you got all this bonus money, but or the rest or a restaurant owner that struggled to keep their business open and then now can't find people and you know everybody struggled everybody yeah. it, it caused it caused you know and if you things. if you Wait, if you look at the city the i I'm, i asked the union leader if they would you know conveniently request the list of um salaries for 2020. i know i they posted it in 2018 when mm -hmm. we had a city election it would t seem timely to me mm -hmm. for the union leader to, to uh put that in there because how many people didn't actually have to work last year, but we continued to pay well, them in their benefits? Right. No one was furloughed, and right. a lot of things just the, didn't the happen. The services weren't provided, so, so I'm just a little no like, No one How? was furloughed. <laughs> no one was furloughed, yet they didn't, you know, when spring came yeah. and people were outside and the COVID numbers started to come down, they didn't hire the summer staff. So in order right. for the kids to be at the parks, and you know the kids really, really well, I mean, sacrificed a lot through we all pay of this. For. I right? pay taxes to have those services. So we actually had to get parents together to go down and clean the parks and clean the trails and take care of things. And we worked with, the, I will say, the parks department wanted to have these mm. things open, and we worked with them. They got the splash pad open, and eventually we got um, the beach, the the lake open. But the pools never opened last year for the kids. Right. The now the community, the private pools, worked with. The health department of the city and they opened the private pools. she's being very polite what she she's is. really saying is that um the north ends private pools were made available to the north ends children but everyone else in the city but kind of had to you know, suck probably it up probably the other health clubs that had pools <laughs> right. worked with them but we did but they did not work with so the they city applied employees. different rules yes right. depending on your socioeconomic they, background they did. and you know there was actually a statement that you know the way they use the term these the, children the, those, those kids, kids or so I, I, um referring yeah. to the kids that, uh, that the, were the city the citizens of the city and their children yes. and that pay for these pools those children can't obey rules and i thought it was horrible because you know those kids those kids are the kids that you know need us the most well right I, I mean as a as a taxpayer i you know i'm paying my my property taxes um for the services that i use which are very minimal yeah. and then 
you know, to have a quality of life in the city. And that means keeping the parks clean. And quite honestly, can we clean this damn city up? Oh, it I just, is just a driving filthy, through. Well, yeah. what, what exactly? Why shouldn't during COVID we have been spotless? So let me tell you what happened. So, you know, because we have teams that go out and clean all the time. Yep. And it got to the point where the people that I would normally reach out to for spring cleanings were like, yeah, we're not doing it because it is so beyond what we can handle yeah. now. Be they're afraid of COVID. They're afraid of what other yeah. things are out there. And it's beyond <laughs> our capacity. It's not just it's picking, not just up, picking trash up litter. Anymore. Now it's like, can you just go dismantle that tent and remove that pile of soaking but wet clothes? We were <laughs> given millions of dollars to um, from the state to deal with homelessness during COVID, transitional housing, opioid addiction, mental health, and all of that money was used to grow the camps. It really grew the camps and it had people come from all over, not even just New Hampshire, right. but from Massachusetts came right. up here. And people were doing Facebook book live videos from down there saying, hey, come to Manchester, we get three hot meals a day, we get tents, we get running water, we get everything, because they put like the portable water things down there. People came from everywhere. Right now, only one in four people on our streets are actually from Manchester right. and the mayor admits those numbers. Those people aren't going to care about your city. This right. is a temporary stopping ground for them, right? right? Well, and it's also, uh, you know, everyone back home knows I say this all the time, but um, the way incentives work, first of all, incentives matter, right? So whatever you're incentivizing, you're going to get more of. So if you are subsidizing yeah. homelessness, you're going to get more of it. What do we mean by that? We literally mean what Victoria just said, where instead of it being we're dealing with one, so a quarter of the homeless are from Manchester. So our homeless number could be a quarter less yes. than it is. But those extra three quarters are a result of the fact of misaligning funds to a problem. Now, one of my new things, and I don't know, maybe you can help us with this, hopefully, when you're mayor. I will help you help me help <laughs> everyone with this. How about that? <laughs> is um, I would love to get a breakdown of what is being spent on the homelessness problem in Manchester. So, and and by yeah. that, I mean per capita, also all the state funds that have come in, the federal funds mm -hmm. that have come in, the allocated state funds, the money going to the nonprofits where these people are making half a million to a million dollars in salaries, but they're not solving the problem. Right. So back to that notion of incentives matter. The point is, if you're now just giving money to people to solve the problem, but they're not held to any metric yes. or standard or show me what you did right. with the money so that you don't get it anymore if you are not performing. So I had actually taken the numbers that I got from the governor's office because, you know, that this mayor is constantly blaming the governor for the problems of the city. I mean, right. Yes. So so, um, That's he, leadership. He had sent out. <laughs> he had sent out the numbers to say, "Hey, yep. this is the amount of money Manchester alone has received this year, and it's—I mean, millions, ten, like millions and millions and millions. It's and millions dollars. and millions. I mean, it's such a ridiculous amount that I actually—I mean, based on the numbers I could figure out, I was like, wow, we're spending." Three hundred thousand yeah. dollars per homeless like person. We can just buy them a house. It was like twenty-six million dollars for a homeless addiction and mental health. All, all together, right? So twenty-six million dollars for a period, short period of time. We're and not that's just for one. Life. That grew that's the problem. That's just one number we know about. Right. So I sent that to the, the city hall this week. I asked for those numbers. Um, they were confused and sent me back something, so I had to clarify what I was asking for. So I'm looking. When I get that information, I will happily send it off to you guys. I'm curious. When you ask for that, are you actually filing an official right to know, or are you just asking someone? I'm just asking because we know the money's been spent, so okay. I don't shouldn't have to do a right to know, right? Right. How was think. this money spent? What is the breakdown? And if they come back and say you need a right to know, all right, mm. but that takes a little bit longer. So I was I, hoping I wouldn't have to. I'm curious, and I'll I'll, I'll let you finish, yeah. but I just want to mention this because we all know that we have a right to know issue, especially down in Nashua. And so I learned this week that they have stopped redacting their information with black and are now doing it with white. And I was like, So what? it's probably harder to see it. It's well, probably psychological. Because if you look at a paper and it's all white, you're not like, oh my God, look at all that redaction. But if it's black, you're like, what the heck? You didn't give me anything. So I literally think it is that 
calculated Simple, right. big brother nonsense and i think it's as a result of that Lori's list that was printed in the paper oh, yeah, where, where people, people were like were oh outraged. my goodness okay right. well, once you see the redaction and you see the way they're treating the yeah. people paying the bills you you know an ordinary person that's my shtick right? right how does an ordinary person back home deal with this right like we're just the ones being exploited and you know we right. just got to suck it up buttercup right? and when it comes to the nonprofits, because we've got some really great mm -hmm. nonprofits out there like liberty house yep. should be the example of how we work with the homeless they i have, donate they, to they them the, yeah the wraparound services yep. that we need you know when people get out of rehab it's not 30 days and done no that's the beginning of their path forward and if right? we're just doing 30 days and done then we're not spending the money efficiently we're not but if we took all of these organizations that we do have in the city that aren't connected to each other mm -hmm. and we formed a coalition of their leadership, we can see what, what's working, what isn't working, what they've tried. Where the holes are. Where, where, exactly, where the gaps in the surfaces are. But we can also have them create a mission statement, goals, and objectives. Now, and they have a certain period of time to reach those. Right. Can I ask you something? Do you think... And I hope I'm not putting you on the spot because I genuinely want the answer to this question I am from okay someone. okay with being put on the spot. Um, do you think there are gaps in the service? I do. Okay. And, I know and what are. are those? So I know that when it comes to um, with addiction and recovery, faith-based organizations do much better work than government agencies. Right? I because believe that too. You I mean, have and to we have, could just make that private sector versus public sector yeah, but and you it will apply have to, to everything. To in. Right, right, <laughs> right. You have to have something to believe in. You have to believe that somebody's in your corner. And, you know, this is this is actually how uh, my kids both go to uh, Catholic school now, thanks to Kate Baker and the Children's Scholarship Fund. <laughs> um, so they were led through COVID through faith. Everything was through faith and not fear. Right. So when you've got that mindset as someone coming out of addiction, really afraid, afraid of every day falling back into it, and you you are led through faith and not fear, you have a much better outcome in life in general. Right. And you've got supports around you that help you. And sometimes having fellow addicts support you isn't the best because you can drown together. Right. Right. But if you've got sober people that have been through this, that are living on faith, they can they can guide you through. So I know that we need to connect better and to have those organizations connected better. Um, I also know that, that when I talk to nonprofits, they've asked for help from City Hall. They want to come together. They want support from the City Hall. They don't want interference from it, but they want support of it. And they're not getting it. And so we, you know, this mayor does not work, like she doesn't play nicely with others. She doesn't work with other people. We know she won't work with the governor. We know she won't work with the state and she won't work with these nonprofits. Um, so or even private organizations, except there are certain ones that are her pets that she does work with. And we've seen it at the board meetings. So we really need to just have these people come together and share where they know the gaps in the services are because they're perfectly aware of what needs to be done out there. Okay, so I guess my question is, and the reason I asked it is, I'm like, how can there be gaps in the system if we've been fighting homelessness for, I don't know, 80 years, uh, we're spending literally yeah. millions and millions yeah. and millions of dollars. And so my question becomes, why this reliance on what this, how the state is going to solve it? Yeah. And I think we lose sight of the individual, right? Yes. Because part of the problem, everyone talks about homelessness. As one entity. And it's, it's this one person with one problem. Yeah, right? or, or many people with many problems. It so it's collectivized. Good. Now, I do a lot of li li litter pickups on my own. We go down, we heart west. We'll go down to yes. the river. You know, we do parks. We do room and rock from time to time. Yep. So I think it's wonderful that all these people are taking care of their city, right? But I will stop and talk to the guys in the tents yes. yep. because yep. I... Because why are you here? Like, right. what's up? What's the story? I mean, so we spend too much time and energy on sheltering people, right? They call them now the, the new buzzword is unsheltered or unhoused. Unhoused. I don't like that word. People don't want a shelter. They want a home. They want a purpose. They want something to to achieve and something to to maintain. So a, you know, a level of life to maintain. And when we're talking like about these organizations, you know, on the state level, we will say, you know, we tend to work in silos, which means you're in your own little yeah. corner of the world doing your own little thing, and you might be able to see what else has to get done, but that's not your task. Right. So <laughs> coming outside of those silos and working together is really how we we do this. But we have to stop. Um, Dr. Ben Carson did a great job with 
talking about economic development and, and housing and how we help the homeless. And, um, you know, it's getting away from shelters and into transitional housing and homes. And that's, if we're looking at shelters, we're looking at temporary everything. That doesn't solve anything. So we can keep throwing money at shelters and temporary solutions. But well, until, if we don't have well, a bigger but, solution, but we are always going to have We have to look shelter. at the, how did you get here? What services do you need right. to get you out of this situation? And while we're giving you those services, here's a place that you can live that you can earn. I mean, you've got to give people responsibilities in this too. So they have to play a part. So can we talk about the fact, you know, everyone, one of the buzzwords we hear a lot now is affordable housing, affordable housing. So I will go on my mini tirade and then I'll let you talk. The problem with affordable housing or the reason why there's no affordable housing is because of government. It's yeah. because of zoning. It's because everyone started to say, actually, no one owns their own private property because we, the government, are going to say, well, we got to tell you exactly or more or less or what or know what you can do with it, right? So people aren't building stuff. In a town like Peterborough, there was a tiny home village that someone built for these marginalized people who have, you know, uh, uh, problems, who uh, can't afford certain other things, and they have literally closed that tiny home village and kicked the people out because it wasn't to the fire code. Yeah. And I went in and I posted and I said. I said, and everyone wonders where the homeless people well, come from. So now you've literally taken someone who was housed, who was sheltered. Maybe not in the so house he that didn't, you and I live in, but in a It's in better a than house. a tent on a river. Exactly. So it's a start, and we can build from there. And now they have kicked those people out because you didn't stick to the paperwork. Well, this this see, goes the, to the same thing that one of the other candidates um, constantly is going after the sober houses and there's supposedly a list of 60. I don't know that that's the case, but whatever it is, we know there's a couple of them. Yep. They aren't, um, there's a difference between like a rooming house and- Congregate an housing. And right, congregate yeah. housing. Congregate housing has pro uh, programs and whatnot where they're, they're actually managed within the house. And, and I believe are, they've got food. They've got pre pre prepared, yeah. food, right, mm -hmm. where, as opposed to taking a three bedroom house and saying, well, there's three people living in each bedroom and they all live in this house together and they pay rent. Well, if we're gonna try to shut those down, where are those nine people going to go live? I'm sorry that it's- No, and I spoke, you know, and I, I will see one of one of the candidates was discussing this and said that I was uninformed. I just want to tell you that I, I my opinion may differ. Right. I am never uninformed. Right. I may do too much. Work. Research. And you know what I mean? Right. Get a little right. obsessive about it because I never want to, I don't want to speak out of turn. Right. So I actually called one of the gentlemen that runs. <laughs> so you're the not sober really homes. a politician. No, I'm not. I'm a public servant. I am public servant to my core, yeah. right? Ask my husband. I'm so good at getting jobs that pay me nothing. But... <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> but these, I, Are you know they what? supposed to pay us? <laughs> I reached out to him and I said, I want to know your side. I've read the articles. I know what's happening. I've listened to, what is your story? And he said, Victoria, I do, you know, I've reached out to Dan Goonan, who was great to work with, yep. he said. He said, he told us what we needed to do. We complied. Next thing we know, the zoning board's involved. He said, every time we yeah. comply, they move the they, goalposts. Exactly. Yes. It's just like, it's no different than when you're building your home and people say it all the time. The inspector comes in and says, and you need to do this. And then you do it because that's what they told you you need to do. And then the inspector comes and says, you need to do that. This city is well, overregulated in right. general for everything. And you shouldn't every, need the permits you need how, to even keep That's why your home. business is expensive. That's why homes are expensive. That's yeah. why people don't renovate their properties. Because once you once you change your, your fuse box to a panel, now you have to upgrade everything. It's too much. So, Victoria, would you say as mayor that is something you would look at, look at zoning, look at maybe if you could... Oh, we have to look know. at it for... Pe like, the, the, the regulations that we currently have are, prohibit people from doing work on their own homes. Yes. They prohibit businesses from opening or expanding because they're not... I, I talk to businesses, out, small businesses all the time. Restaurants will say, well, I, you know, this code enforcement officer said I got it and then this person came in and said I don't. So we need to unify, like, have a uniform yep. process for everything, including sober homes and transitional yep. housing. And maybe it's as simple as, I don't know if it's an ordinance or a regulation or whatever, but, you know, maybe it's like, no, 
you know what, city, you get one pass. You get one time to tell people what well, to do, I, and I, then that's it. Supposedly, so if you, we were doing that, I believe, when Gatsis was mayor, the, the, the permitting office, basically, they were trying to streamline it so that when the business came in and said... I want to open a business. They said, okay, well, here you have to do this from the, you know, here's all the different things so that at least you were just going once instead of going. I mean, I don't, I think I'm fairly informed. I'm not sure what the process always is. I mean, for something everything. like granny flats, right? Um, uh, that's yeah, a South right. African term. Maybe there's an American like mom, mom pods. Right? Mom pods. But the, this sort of notion where you can, um, allow someone you know we have a basement we yeah. do use it mm -hmm. now but like Same. if there was an economic reason it has an external door yeah. i might be open oh, to being like yeah, the oh, city would be like we well, can't you do know? that you'll have to put in sprinklers and we're going to make you put but in another city but you can live there so, so this is this is the main part of the problem right the city is supposed supposed to provide services for its people yep. we are not supposed to bow to the city right. the city is supposed to bow to us that's right and that and is where we are lost. and until people start thinking about it that way that that's there are services there are we are not services. under their control well yeah right. and i mean you know for those of us uh, tammy and i at a minimum you know we've never had children in the school system and i'm I like wow them. how much am i paying for that and my children it, go know, to schools outside of the school system where we do get scholarships but we're still responsible for part of it so i'm paying pay. my taxes yeah. plus that you know and so uh, you know i'd love to see maybe i would like to see some you know interesting dynamic innovative real reform and change with you. I do too, that's why I'm running. There you go. So. <laughs> and I know for a fact that if you wanna get more information about Victoria's campaign or if you'd like to sign up to help or put a sign in your lawn or very importantly, donate some cash, any amount. And I will um, say, I hate I hate this ass because we're all blue collar families, It's okay, right? but you know, but it's we, true, everything. I was thinking about the blue collar person and how, you know, they may, writing a check for $100 to a campaign might not be possible, but you know what? I bet you could go to her website and every month drop $20, and I bet you can find $20 if it means enough to see the city move in a better direction so that we can have a better It's community. an investment in the city. It's an investment in making yep. sure your taxes are secured yep. for the, the future that I would be in there. So is it fair to say you would not bust the tax cap? Oh, God, no. I, first of all, I think because of the people that I know that did so much work on that, I think that they would hold me personally responsible <laughs> if I did. But no, because I know how it is. Like right now, there, we should stop the revaluations right yes. now because the market is so, so bloated crazy. and crazy that it's going to drive artificially drive up the costs yep. of the homes and therefore taxes that people yep. can't afford coming out of this situation that we've been in. But these aren't things that people... If, if you thought about the city as providing services to the people, this would be the thought process. This is not the current thought process at City Hall. Victoria Sullivan for mayor.com. Yes, Victoria Sullivan for mayor.com. Get out there, Thank sign you, up ladies. for a sign. You need and an hour will, show because this is I too know. fast. We can't get one. We're, you know. <laughs> oh, we haven't got a book. And check out my book, uh, The Ecstatic Pessimist, available on Amazon and at carlagarrick.com. If you have any questions awesome. for Victoria or us, you can email us at Manch talk at gmail.com and until next week you can email me at victoria at victoria sullivan from air.com there you go that's Thanks, all we got guys, guys. bye